<gasps> Fancy seeing you here. Welcome. What's that? You too? You used the dog game engine? Ah, splendid, splendid. I see you too are a game dev of culture. But alas, you are not here to have your ego fluffed. You seek wisdom. You've journeyed long and far. I, nor is Aramis the wise. Tip number one. The animation player node is one of the best nodes you can possibly master and is definitely something I slept on for far too long. You can obviously animate things like the collision shapes and the sprites to get things to move up and down or move through the world in a very rhythmic way, but you can also do things such as adding in a method call to your scripts. So you click add track, grab a function, and then you can insert a key here and then search for the method you want. I've created this hello world function. And then when we go ahead and run this script here, you can see that it will print out like and subscribe, which is something you should be doing. But you can see here that this is incredibly powerful, especially if you have some programmatic things that you wanna be calling during your animations. To take this even a step further and roll right into my next feature that I think is a must use and one that I think is very useful is in here when you are trying to pick your easing between two different keyframes in your animation, you can come to the easing and move it up and down but I find it very challenging to get exactly what I want. Well, you can right click on that and then go ahead and pick a predefined one. And you know what, just save the trouble, pick in and out. It is what you're gonna wanna use most often. Okay, that was kind of one and two, but let's go number three. Did you know that you can name your collision layers? Yes, you can name them. So now if I have this projectile, I can say the projectile is part of my spell layer and then it's looking in the mask to find enemies to collide with. It is really nice. You can come up into project settings and then in here type in layer and then you have all these different types of layers you can add names to. Specifically, I'm using this 2D physics collision layer. This makes it so much easier when you're trying to parse in natural language what your collisions are trying to do. You're not trying to say in your head, remember, okay, three is enemy, one is player, blah, blah, blah. You can even use this little ex expandable dot, dot, dot here to just quickly see those layers and the names accordingly. You still haven't learned anything? Come back here. Don't leave the video yet. I have more information. Let's go. Number four, here we go. For this next tip, I'm gonna show you some of the units inside my current game, Chess Survivors. I have a bunch of different types of units and they all inherit from an enemy class, but they're all also part of the group enemy. That is very useful when I come over into my script and look at one of my projectile scripts here for this cribbage ability. One of the projectiles checks to see when an area is entered, it checks to see if the area is in the group enemy. This makes it a lot easier because then you can put multiple different things inside of a group and then check to see if it's a member of the group. You could also say if area dot is enemy, you could do the exact same thing there but that is a little bit more restrictive and I've really grown to liking using the group feature within Godot instead of relying on class names because sometimes class name is very specific and you can use group name to be a little bit more broad. Was that one useful? All right, all right, all right. five guaranteed to be useful. Five is good, here we go. I get so frustrated when I import pixel art and then I have to come over, uncheck filter, and then re-import it for all of them. That might be easy for a few pieces of pixel art, but when that becomes hundreds, that's just a lot of wasted time, and I like to be a good, efficient developer. So my fifth tip here is to go to presets and hit on set as default for texture. That'll make all your textures that you re-import in the future import without the filter on. You can also do that for audio, where audio comes in with a default of loop checked, so you can uncheck that, re-import it, and then make sure just to set as default for mp3. Did I tell you there were two bonus tips? Here's the first one to guarantee to make you stronger. I don't know about you, but sometimes when I click in the UI, I accidentally click on the wrong thing and move it around, and sometimes that can be catastrophic to basically I don't even understand it, I don't put it back to the right spot, and uh, I might end up 
putting some tech data in my project and have to rip it out later. Long story short, there's a few ways you can do that. One, you can use this little uh, lock on icon, which will lock that piece in place so you can't accidentally move it. But the other one might be to hold alt and then you'll guaranteed to move the piece that you're selected on over in the left one. I hope that's a useful bonus tip. Just a nice little thing that might make your life a little bit easier as you're grinding away in your project. And my final super bonus tip here is all of these annoying warnings at the bottom of the screen. I know a sure-fired way to get rid of them. And that is this little button over here in the corner. You can just click it and they're gone. But actually, the real way to get rid of these errors, if there are some you really don't care about, is come up in your project settings. Under search, make sure you go to search here and type in warnings. You'll see GDScript under debug and you can turn off some of the errors that you really don't care about. The ones I really don't care to be warned about are unused argument here, also the unused signal and return value discarded. All right, real talk, the Godot game engine is pretty great. I hope some of these tips really are gonna help you make your project a lot easier. There are things I've learned in the last few months that have really helped make the quality of life of the engine a lot better. If you enjoyed what you're watching, please leave a like and subscribe. It'll make Carl happy. Please consider joining me over on twitch.tv slash Aramis. I am live Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 1 or 2 p.m. Central Time, and I promise I'm better live. And you can even come ask me questions. I'm more than happy to tutorialize live. That being said, I'm Aramis. Have a great day.